Let us pray. Father God, there is nothing better than you. So Father, forgive us when we get distracted and for when we settle for things that are so less than you. Father, where we just get settled in our routine, settle in our lifestyle, settle in the familiarities and the comfort of, of just living a nice life here in a good country. Uh, Father, forgive us for the distractions for where we uh, put so many other things ahead of you or above you or equal to you or even put them close to you. Uh, Father, help us to focus on you and to put you first and to put you second and put you third. Father, just to be with us now and to give us the the ears to hear, the eyes to see, uh, the brain to understand, and the heart to believe uh, the word that you give us. Father, just speak through me this morning. In your son's name I pray, amen. Now church, as you know, we are a team, right? Amen? All right. We are all part of Team HBC, and each of us should want to be and need to be a good teammate. So for the past couple of Sundays, I share with you the type of person, the type of teammate that we should be if we wanted to be the best teammate possible. I shared with you some attributes of a good teammate, and and we learned that we need to be active, that we need to be coachable, that we need to be usable, that we need to be lovable, and that we need to be missional. And if we do those things, we will be a good teammate. If we have those attributes, we will be successful in fulfilling our role on this team, and then we will help the church in succeeding in its mission, the mission of fulfilling the Great Commission. Now, doesn't that sound simple? I mean, doesn't it sound simple? Just explain it like that. And for the past few weeks, we have, in this series, we have learned who we are as a team, what our mission is, and the type of teammate we should be. And I hope that it sounded simple, right? I presented it as simple as it is. Church should be simple. Why is that? It's because church is simply a group of Jesus followers who come together to accomplish the work Jesus has for us and to worship God. That's it. And we can do this by being active, by being coachable, by being usable, by being lovable, and by being missional. Listen, church isn't that complicated. It really isn't. It really is simple. Church is simple, or at least it should be. But the reality is, sometimes church gets complicated, doesn't it? Raise your hand. Have you ever noticed that church can get complicated at times? Right? Uh, Some of y'all. You see, a healthy church team is simple to preach about. It's simple to read about. But why is it sometimes so difficult to put into practice? And do you want to know the answer? It's because you are on the team. But don't worry. It's not just you that makes church complicated sometimes. Church can also be complicated because of the person sitting to the left of you. It can be complicated because of the person sitting to the the right of you. And please don't forget the person sitting in front of you and the person sitting behind you this morning. And whatever you do, please don't forget about the person who is preaching to you this morning, right? I can also make things uh, complicated when it, it should be simple. You see, church can be complicated complicated at times because churches are filled with people and people can be complicated. It can be complicated. Team HBC can be complicated from time to time because it is filled with people. Although we serve a perfect God, we ourselves are not perfect. All right, turn to your neighbor and say you're not perfect. All right, now men... I know y'all enjoyed that if your bride was sitting beside you, all right? Just rejoice in that. That's not often that we get to do that, all right? Wives, forgive your husband. They were just being obedient and submission to their elder, all right? So don't hold this against them, all right? Now, did you hear what your teammate just told you? 
All right? Well, it's the truth. All right, now it's only fair. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not perfect either. I, I could tell it was hard for some of you ladies to say that, right? Because you like to make us men think you're perfect. And you say it enough, we start to believe it. We actually do start to believe it, all right? But church, the reality is none of us are perfect. Although we have been saved by a perfect Savior, although His perfect blood has washed away our imperfections, although we are relationally perfect in the eyes of God, practically speaking, we are far from being perfect. All of us Christians, while being, yes, relationally perfect in the eyes of God, are far from being perfect practically. You see, when God looks at us, He sees Jesus. I'm so thankful for that. Are you thankful for that? So, so in a sense, yes, we are perfect in Christ. We have been made righteous and we have a relationship with God because we have been made perfect by the blood of Jesus. So we are perfect relationally. But in our day-to-day -day living, in the way we treat others, and the way we treat one another, as maybe our teammates here in Team HBC, we are far from perfect, right? We're far from perfect. Of course, you've seen your ladies at HBC. You come close. You come close, right? But church, the truth is, we all miss the mark of perfection every day. The, the truth is, we all still sin. For instance, we still get bad attitudes. We still have a bad day and speak harshly to one another. We can still be selfish from time to time. Even though we have been born again, we still daily battle with that sin-bent, depraved, fallen nature that we are born with. So yes, Team HBC should be simple and easy, but sometimes it's complicated and hard, and that is because the team consists of imperfect people like you and like me who make up the team. So today, I want to help you with this team um, when things get complicated. I want to share with you some attributes that we should all have that will make us better teammates. And these attributes will help us with our teammates. It will help us imperfect people as we deal with other imperfect people. You see, the past few weeks, I, I said we need to be active and, and coachable and usable and lovable and missional. And those attributes are what we all need to accomplish our goal on this team. These are the attributes we need to accomplish our mission on the team. These are the attributes that we all need to accomplish our objective. But today I want to share with you some attributes that we will all need to help us as we serve on this team with one another. So these attributes have more to deal with our relationship with one another, more so uh, than they have to deal with in accomplishing our mission, okay? The attributes of active, coachable, usable, lovable, missionable are the ones we need to accomplish our mission. But the ones today will help us in our relationship with each other as we accomplish the mission, all right? Now, last week, I did probably my worst sermon ever in some of your opinions, all right, because it was y'all were heavily involved in it. I told you that we needed to be connected, and then I went around and asked everybody your name, and, you know, and, and some of y'all probably didn't, some of the people didn't come back today just because of that, right? Scared I was going to do it again. But anyway, I said that we are connected. If we are a team, we need to be connected. We need to be intertwined. We must be bonded together. We must be one because the strongest and best teams are the ones that's in the trenches together, that built that bond together, that are sharing life together. But guess what? When you connect a big group of imperfect people, sometimes you get a mess, right? You know when you are cooking, right? When you put all these ingredients together, sometimes you make a mess, all right? And that's what churches can be too. So the attributes I'm going to share with you today and next week and possibly next week, we'll see what the Lord keeps giving me, but I, these are going to be attributes that help us in our relationship with one another, all right? And when we're perfect in our relationship, we're close to perfect with one another, then we can focus on doing our job and the things that we've already talked about, all right? So if we have these attributes that we're going to talk about today, church will be a whole lot simpler. 
If we have uh, these attributes, the church will not struggle like so many churches I've seen with infighting and bickering and drama among its members. I, I seriously don't know how pastors pastor a drama-filled church. I would check out so long ago, right? But, but these attributes, if we're not careful, if we don't have these attributes, that could become us, okay? Because we're all imperfect people. So these attributes will help us remain connected, all right? So let's get started. The first one is this, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Now, isn't in our human nature to be defensive, right? We, we get defensive quick. And why is that? It's because we don't like being physically, emotionally, or spiritually attacked. I mean, does anybody like being attacked? Okay, I didn't think so, all right? All right? It is our nature to protect ourselves and to pr- try to prevent uh, ourselves from, from being attacked. And the way we protect ourselves from these emotional and spiritual attacks is, guess what? We put up walls. We put up walls around our heart. Well, unfortunately, we bring those defensive nature and that walled up heart with us to church. A church, if you truly want to be connected in the deepest sense with your church family, with Team HBC, there can be no walls. When it comes to family, when it comes to a team, there should be no walls. You see, walls are a hindrance to intimacy. Walls prevent people from developing a deep relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I do so much marriage counseling with couples in trouble and all this. And you know what? Most of the problem, 99% of the time, is walls. You have to take down these walls that people have up. And they're not really connecting in the sense because they all have these protective walls up. So let me say something that some of you need to hear. It's hard for people to truly get to know you if you are emotionally stiff-arming them all the time. It's hard for people to laugh with you when you laugh and cry with you when you cry if you don't let your guard down. It's hard to develop deep emotional connections if you are not emotionally available. It's hard for your teammates to walk beside you in life If you refuse to allow them to get close to you. We all need to be vulnerable. Now I know that sounds scary. That sounds terrifying. It even sounds illogical. To make yourself vulnerable to your teammates. Because we all know. That when you make yourself vulnerable. You are leaving yourself open to attacks. So the truth is we are scared to let down the walls because if we let folks get close to us, there's a chance that they might hurt us. There's a chance that they might betray our confidence. There's a chance that they might hurt our feelings. If we let someone get close, if we let our guard down, if we lower our walls, we are giving people an opportunity to damage us in in many ways. So for those of you who have been hurt, by people outside the church or, or perhaps even inside the church, you all know what I'm talking about. So many of us have felt that sting of betrayal. Perhaps you have experienced with, with, with the betrayal in your life, right? Perhaps you have been betrayed by a romantic partner or perhaps a longtime friend or perhaps a church member. Or perhaps someone even in authority over you, like a, like a teacher or a coach or a principal or a pastor. Trust me, I know what betrayal feels like. I felt the consequences of opening myself up to others and, and bringing them close to me only to feel the knife. And that is what betrayal is. Betrayal is being hurt by someone that you have allowed in your life. You took down your walls, you let down your guard, you brought someone into your circle of trust, and then boom, they hurt you. Now, for those of us who have been hurt in the past, and that's most of us, if not all of us, you know what we normally do? We usually overcompensate by putting up more walls to guard our heart. We have the attitude after being stabbed about like this, I will never... Never, ever, ever be hurt again by someone I trust. Because from now on, I'm going through life alone. 
I'm trusting in no one. I am safe in this cold, dark castle that is my heart. Church, I hope you listen to what I'm about to say. All right, don't miss this. Don't allow past hurt to cause you to miss out on present healthy relationships. Don't allow past betrayals to be the reason you miss out on pleasant, uh, present blessings. Don't allow past pain to prevent you from being a healthy teammate with healthy relationships with your brothers and sisters in Christ. If we want to be a successful team, we need to learn to trust our teammates. We need to be open up with them. We need to confide, on, uh, confide in them. We need to lean on them. We need to depend on them. You see, we are really good in the church at putting a smile on our face and patting each other on the back and pretending that everything is all right. We're really good at, at pretending that we don't need assistance. We're good at putting on a front before people and acting like we don't have weaknesses spiritually, emotionally, or physically. Some of us are, are good at pretending to have deep relationships while keeping everyone from truly knowing who we are. Church, we need to be vulnerable with one another because that is the only way to develop deep relationships. If, you want to be a, if we want to be a great team, we need to trust each other. And that means taking down our walls and, yes, leaving ourselves vulnerable. We need to trust one another with our heart. I want you to listen to the Bible talk about how a church should have this intimacy with one another and how they should interact with one another, all right? And in my Bible, the title of this passage is Qualities of a Sound Church, all right? I'm going to read to you the words from Titus chapter 2, first eight verses. It says, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine." That the older man be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, and corruptibility. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. You see, in this passage, we learn that God wants the team, the church, to teach to instruct, to correct, to advise, to rebuke one another. But how can we do that if we have walls up? How can we do that if our guard is up? How can the older and more mature teammates train and help the younger teammates as the Bible instructs us if we're not opening up and making ourselves vulnerable? How can we receive encouragement and training and teaching and, yes, even the criticism and correction we need if we're not making ourselves vulnerable? Their answer is we can't. If you want real and deep relationships with your teammates, you need to trust them. And that means you need to be vulnerable. We all need to be vulnerable. All right, the second attribute is this. Be tough. Be tough. If you are a new believer, all right, like, like Avery was, we just baptized him. If perhaps you've been a believer for a while, but HBC is your first church team, I want to tell you something. And you're not going to like it. This is something that has happened and will happen again to each and every one of us who have been on a church team for more than a, a few years. It is unavoidable and unfun, and if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. And what is this unfun, unavoidable thing? Well, let me tell you. From time to time, you will 
get upset about something. You will have your feelings hurt by someone. You may even get mad so much at a teammate that you're saying, well, I'm just going to leave the team. Listen, our team has a lot of people on it. And all these people bring a lot of different personalities and a lot of different opinions. Personalities that just clashes with yours. Opinions that you might disagree with. So it is inevitable that you will, will get into the disagreement with a teammate about something. You will get your feelings hurt by a teammate. And when this happens, I want you to remember that you are an imperfect person on a team filled with imperfect people. So eventually we will do something imperfect. It is inevitable that one of your teammates will say something or do something that upsets you. Maybe a rude or hurtful or unconsiderate comment will be said directly to you. Maybe an action will be done indirectly that impacts you in a negative and hurtful way. But the end result is the same, right? You're hurt. You're feeling some pain. So an attribute that we all need to have as a teammate is this, toughness. And for, I'm going to be honest with you. That's what every pastor, before I started the church, I asked for advice, all the pastors. The very first thing they say, toughness. Perseverance. You're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get upset. That's the first thing all the wise guys, not the wise guys and like mobsters, but the, you know, the, the smart guys, tell me, be tough. So I have three things to tell you about this to a topic that I believe will help you. Number one, I'm sorry. I'm sorry when you get hurt. It's never fun. It always is going to hurt. You, you never can be so tough that things don't hurt you. So yes, it hurts when you get in a teammate or uh, an argument with a teammate. I'm sorry. I hate that this happens from time to time, but the reality is it happens. And it happens because we're a team of sinners. But listen, after it happens, once that initial pain or the hurt or the anger is over, you need to go and talk to that teammate who hurt you. After talking, if things between you and your teammate are still not working, if things are still not reconciled, then you go talk to a pastor. You go and talk to a deacon. Listen, okay, this is important. There is nothing that can be said or done that can shatter a relationship between siblings and Christ. Did you hear me? Anything. And everything can be worked out and fixed if both teammates are saved believers who love the Lord. Again, as I told you, I've done a lot of marriage counseling. The first thing I do before I meet the couple, I say, do you all both want to work on it? Do you both want this marriage to work? If one of them says no, I don't care how much the other one wants it, I won't meet with them. Because I say, I'm wasting my time and you're wasting your time because it takes two to tango, right? It takes two people to make a relationship. So you need to realize that as teammates, as church members, if you really want things to work, if you truly love each other and you want to be teammates, there is nothing said, there is nothing that can be done that can shatter that relationship. Everything can be repaired. It takes time. It takes time to heal. That relationship might be damaged, you not be, be as close friends, but the love and serving one another and helping one another can still be there. Right? Amen? Now, the second one is going to be hard for some of you to swallow, but you need to. All right? So I want you to chew on what I'm about to say and then swallow. Your instinct is going to be to spit it out. All right? But it needs to be like the little baby. You get the spoon, you just say, nope, going back in. You're going, to, you're going to eat that thing like 10 times before you swallow, all right? So this is all something that we need to ingest, all right? Here it is. Number two, I don't like it either, and you won't like it. Stop acting like an innocent victim, all right? Yes, you are a victim. We all become victims, okay? We will become the victim of a teammate from time to time, but guess what? You're not perfect either, you're not innocent either. I promise you the same way that you're hurting, you have hurt someone else's feelings the same way and you might not even be aware of it, either directly or indirectly. 
We have all been the victim. Yes. I'm not saying you don't have a reason to be upset. But we have also have all been the perpetrator before. So when you get your feelings hurt, don't wallow in it. We, yes, we have all been the victim, but we have also all been the villain. Remember, this is what will help you. This is the point of this one. We're all imperfect sinners. So when somebody has sinned against you, when someone has hurt you, when you look in the mirror and remember that you are not perfect, that you're a sinner that needed saving too, that will help you understand where they're coming from. It doesn't justify it. But it helps you understand, well, gosh, they're just like me. They're a sinner. So remembering that you are not perfect will help you when another imperfect person hurts you. All right, number three, remember this. Just because you and a teammate don't always get along does not mean y'all can't be teammates. The reality is this. Some of y'all will just not like another person. You'll love them. You can serve with them, you can get along with them, but that person will just have a personality that doesn't gel with yours, right? It's a person, you love them, you'll serve to death, but when you're at a potluck dinner with them and you're sitting and you're cross and you're like, I got to listen to them for an hour, Lord, to give me patience and strength. You really love them. You honestly do. You don't wish them bad, you love them, you serve with them, but their voice or the way they talk or the perfume they wear, or something about them would just be like, mm. you, you, it would just get you. And that's you in your flesh, okay? I'm not justifying it, but sometimes people just get on your nerves, right? I, I know some of you uh, Redskins fans have a hard time getting with the Cowboys fans. You know, it's kind of like that. You love each other, but you know, it's tough for that hour meal together, all right? But listen, just because you, you butt heads, just because somebody doesn't gel with you, doesn't mean you can't be a teammate with them. And sometimes two people are so much alike, they butt heads. Have you ever found that out? Sometimes when you have all these teams in churches, and you have two alphas on the same team, I'm like, oh, no. You know, and every meeting is just them. My idea's better. My idea's better. And the rest of the team may be like, well, y'all, y'all are so much identical. Well, y'all just please, stop it. <laughs> y'all, you know? But sometimes you just clash heads because you're so much alike. But listen, that doesn't mean you can't be teammates with someone that annoys you or frustrates you or that you bump heads with. You can still love them. You can still serve with them, even if they do act like a jerk from time to time. And how do we do this? We do it by remaining focused on Jesus and the mission that he gave us. All right, take Pastor Josh, for example, all right? He's annoying, obnoxious. His voice gives lots of us headaches. He personally hurts my feelings all the time. His feet stink. And, and he drives like a wild man. All right? But, but I still love him, still serve with him. We're still teammates, and we serve the Lord together. You see, you can be good teammates, and you can love each other without being best friends. Now, that was just an example I gave you, all right? Now, yes, I made up a bunch of stuff just to prove my point. The reality is all that stuff I said about Pastor Josh is not true. Don't know about the feet thing. I haven't got it close enough to smell, all right? I assume he washed them. The only thing that is true is the driving part, all right? Seriously, I advise all of you to never ride with Pastor Josh unless you want to develop deeper prayer time. Or unless you want a higher chance of seeing Jesus that afternoon. All right? So if you're ready to see the Lord or you want to pray more, ride with Josh. Other than that, avoid him. All right? You, sh don't, sh don't say that. Yeah, that's, that's right. All right. That's right. He teaches them what not to do. That's right. No. <laughs> but all joking aside, all right? <laughs> if, you, if you're part of this team, eventually something will upset you or annoy you right? Or, or make you mad. Eventually, someone on the team will say something hurtful or do something you disagree with or oppose you on some church issue. So when that happens, what should you do? Should you quit the church? No. Should you plot your revenge? No. Should you badmouth your teammate to everyone? No. You just need to have some attributes. You need to be lovable, which we talked about two weeks ago. You love your neighbors, you love yourself. You love your brother and sister in Christ. You love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then you need to be tough, what we're talking about now. 
And yes, you also need to be forgivable, which is the attribute I'm going to finish up with in just a moment. But first I want to share with you two Bible verses, all right? The first one is Ephesians 4.2, and the second one is Colossians 3.13. All right, so listen to the text in Ephesians. It says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Remember that bearing part. Now listen to the verse in Colossians. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. You see, both of, both of these verses deal with how we believers are to deal with one another. These verses are telling us how to be a good teammate and how to interact with the rest of the team. And I want you to notice that both of those verses uses the word bear. Now, bearing something means handling the weight of something, right? So this is saying, good or bad, we need to put up with each other, all right? We need to bear the weight of one another, even when we're being a burden on each other's lives. Even when that relationship is heavy and tough, we are to bear it. We are to put up with it. These verses are reminding us that we're all works in progress. We are all growing in Christ. So that means we will all still make mistakes. We will all still hurt each other from time to time. So church, let's be patient with one another. Let's bear up one another. Let's put up one another. And you know what it takes to do that? Toughness. Toughness. We are to bear with one another's weakness. We are to put up with one another's imperfections by being tough. We need to be tough. All right, last attribute that I want to share with you today. Be forgivable. Be forgivable. Church, Aren't we quick to expect God to forgive us when we sin, right? Like as soon as we pull that trigger, God forgive me. <laughs> you know, God. The, the moment we sin, we expect God to forgive us. The moment we confess our sin, the moment we repent, the moment we finish our prayer asking for God's forgiveness, we expect to be totally forgiven. And the reality is if we're truly honest, if we're truly authentic in our repentance, in our confession, we are instantly forgiven. But we are also quick to expect each other to forgive us when we mess up, aren't we? When we do something that is dumb or say something mean, we expect our teammates to forgive us in the blink of an eye, right? We expect them to get over it. We expect instantaneous mercy and grace. We expect to be forgiven no matter how heinous our sin is. We expect to be forgiven the moment we commit them. However... When it comes to forgiving others who sin against us, we tend to move a little slower, don't we? We want time to think about it. We want time to process it. We want time to deal with our emotions. We want time to heal before we even consider thinking about forgiving the one who trespassed against us. I've noticed that some people in, in life like to withhold forgiveness. And I see this a lot in people outside the church. They like to demand forgiveness. Like a, a, they hold something over this person in like a superiority complex or something. They demand certain ho hoops to be jumped through. They demand these great acts of repentance. They expect the one who sinned against them to come and just beg their forgiveness day after day with tears. In fact, if I didn't know it any better... I would think that some people, and I'm sure you've met people like this, just seem to love to be upset. Some people love to be mad. Some people love to play a victim because they love to just get up empathy from others, right? Have you ever had a coworker like that or met a person like that? Where they just love drama. If something's not going bad in their life, they're miserable. They just, if it's not them, they want to get in other people's drama and other people's hurt. They just love to wallow in a big drama pool. Well, let me tell you something. If you want to be like Jesus, you need to be someone who forgives completely and quickly. Listen, life is too short to hold a grudge. 
Life is too short. And the mission of the gospel and advancing the gospel to the ends of the earth is too valuable for us to be offended by something so trivial. We all need to be tough and we need to be forgivable. Now listen, I know, I'm, I know it's a whole lot easier to want forgiveness to, than to give it. It's hard. I, I do understand that. It is hard. But we need to be forgivable. Why? Because we need to be like Jesus. We need to be good at forgiving one another. Now, most of you know the Lord's Prayer, right? Show of hands. Y'all all know the Lord's Prayer? Y'all have all heard it, probably got it memorized. Well, as you know, Jesus taught his disciples this model prayer after they asked him how to pray. And in that prayer, Jesus says these familiar words as found in Matthew chapter 6. He says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Maybe your translation says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, and I already shared with you Colossians 3.13, but let me share with you it again. It says, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. But in case those verses are still not enough, I want to share with you one more. Paul wrote to the team at Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, these words that are found in Ephesians 4.32. It says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. We are to forgive as we have been forgiven. We are to forgive one another as God has forgiven us through Jesus. Church, I want you to remember that the God of all creation, the God who knows no sin, the God who cannot sin, the God who hates sin, the God who one day will purge this world in fire because of sin, the God who throws people into the fires of hell because of sin is the same wonderful and holy and perfect God that has forgiven us all of our sins. He has forgiven you and me our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. So if a holy and perfect and righteous God can forgive you and me, I think that we should be able to forgive one another. Amen? So let's forgive one another. Let's forgive the bad attitudes. Let's forgive the harsh words. Let's forgive whatever else needs forgiven. Because we want to be like our Father in heaven. We want to be like Jesus. So be forgivable. Now team, I want to wrap things up this morning by reminding you that church should be simple. We should be a people who are connected by Jesus and for Jesus to do the work Jesus gave us. So let's keep things simple. And we do that by being vulnerable. We can do that by being tough. And we can do that by being forgivable. And yes, we know that since we're not perfect, things will still get a little messy from time to time. Things will still get a little complicated occasionally. But when that happens, let us imperfect teammates remember to be vulnerable, be tough, and be forgivable. If we each have all of those attributes, although we will still not be perfect, this team will be a whole lot closer to perfection. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for messages that encourage and correct and even hurt at times. Father, help us to be vulnerable as a people who have been hurt so much. Help us to trust one another and let down our walls and let down our guard. Let us trust one another with our hearts. And as people trust us with their, with their heart, Father God, let us love on that heart and protect that heart. Father, just help us to be tough. And Father, I thank you that in heaven, we won't need these last two attributes. We won't have to be tough because we will have no hurt. We will not have to be forgivable because there will be nothing that we have to forgive. 
But while we're on this earth, when we're in these sinful bodies and sinners, and when we're a team of imperfect people serving a perfect God, we will have to learn to, to be tough, to bear with one another, even the folks that hurt us accidentally or hurt us deliberately. Father, help us to be tough. And Father, probably the most hardest attribute of all of these three is is being forgivable. Father, help us to forgive. Father, help us to forgive those things that we're holding on to, perhaps uh, abuse from a parent or spouse. Or perhaps we were mistreated in school or bullied. Perhaps we uh, just experienced an unfaithful spouse, uh, a boss at work that was a tyrant. And perhaps we have all these hurts, Lord. Perhaps some of us, I know, have even came from churches that have had so much pain and suffering that was just put on them. Father, help us to forgive everything. Even when people don't seek repentance, even when they don't think they've done no wrong, help us to forgive like you forgave us. Total forgiveness. Even when people don't deserve it because we didn't deserve it, but you still forgave us. So help us to forgive our past and present trespasses that were against us. And help us to be forgivable going forward. In your son's name I pray. Amen.